Okay, so I think. Sorry. Okay, so I think we can start now, class. Um, allow me to. Uh, no, no. Um, start the lecture. So um, yes, class. So um, this morning we are going to discuss about, um, as what you can see here in the screen, Unit Four, the gender issues and policies. So. We start off with a lesson on global gender issues. And in our discussion on global gender issues, as what you have already read from the book, we start off with a discussion on the following issues, no, or rather our lesson objectives are the following. Firstly, uh, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the various forms of abuses against women's rights, explain Philippine laws that empower women, Empathize with the struggle of the LGBT community. Demonstrate what you have learned in a real-life setting. So we start with a discussion on gender and human rights. And um, the following materials that I am going to share were, are not exactly from the book itself. I am using a material from the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization or UNESCO. This material is called um, Investing in Cultural Diversity. So this is actually a book from the United Nations now published in 20, 2005, I believe. And I'm basing the... I'll share my, my screen class. Ha. I'm basing the discussion on a material on human rights from the UN. So sharing my entire screen. This is the material and this chapter is titled human rights are universal uh, rather this chapter is titled cultural diversity human rights and democratic governance however we're just going to focus on the lesson on human rights here so this is investing in cultural diversity and intercultural dialogue from UNESCO 2009 pala this was published in 2009 so let's start off with rights right uh, throughout this, uh, no, throughout our lessons on gender, we have actually discussed about human rights already, class. No, uh, for example, you have learned about human rights in the lesson on queer theory. So we discussed about queer theory, and um, you have learned about rights. No, in the last lesson, actually, from patriarchy, so patriarchy, sexism, feminism, and queer theory. The Yogya Karta principles you have learned about rights in a way because in for example in patriarchy we have discussed about um, the fact that people have equality you know supposed to be everybody is equal and why however why are patriarchal structures still prevalent and uh, other than that um, sexism, for example, a person or a, a human being or whether you are a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, you should not be discriminated because of your um, gender. So that's another human right. So what is human rights? Um, looking through the... I, you can actually see my screen class now as I share my screen in this manner. I'm sharing my camera because I'm recording the lecture from my phone. So I'm sharing my screen in this manner so that um, um, the camera can see me <laughs> while I talk. So if you go to, to the material here from uh, Investing in Cultural Diversity and Intercultural Dialogue, Human Rights, in this section now, but I will just share my PowerPoint for this part. So Human Rights are universal because they belong to all of humanity. So, um, human rights are universal. It means that whether you are from, you are an, an indigenous person, whether a person is rich or poor, whether they are pretty or not, <laughs> is there even such a thing? Whether or not a person is gay or straight, no? everybody has the same rights whether you come from asia or america european or australian african or south american 
Pero human na sa, nara sa dere sa earth, no? Of course. Pero, yes, class, human rights are universal. Everybody has rights, na? Because they belong to all of humanity. On a, on an international context, although I hope that you can still apply this to the local context, na? Um, ideally, the, the concept of rights is, the, is has the notion of of rights belonging to everyone. This means that, uh, just like what I mentioned, all of those social groups or um, social strat, despite social stratification, when we say social stratification, it refers to the differences of, of social groups in society. No? Despite our differences, all of us belong to the same human race in a way, on a more, on a more higher level, um, on a higher level, no, or rather, it's not exactly a higher level, but on a more exis existential level, no, existentially, we know that we all belong to the same human race. That is, um, we are all human beings, and because of that. Uh, maybe the next time we see another person who is different from us, who may not be like us, we can still see them with dignity because they have, they are also human, na? So whether that is the random person in the street, especially today in the pandemic that we see many people who have, who have, um, who have mental issues, na? And, and then, kani bitaw mga naasadalan nga mga in our in our slang we call them mga na, na, na buang, ang mga buang no kan ibitong despite the fact that it's very scary for us to see a mentally ill person and we don't want anything to do with those people maybe initially we don't want to come near anyone who might have coronavirus or whatever but um although it's not connected to human rights but maybe we can connect it to human rights uh, in the sense that even though they are mentally ill, even though that a person is sick with COVID, they are still humans, no? Of course. And even though nga na ay COVID ang tao, that doesn't mean nga pwede ra nato sila basta basta hunog dala, di ba? Especially sa mga tao nga, if you've ever heard of anyone who has been quarantined because of COVID, the discrimination that they that they experience because of being, of being, um, infected with a virus it's not good that they are discriminated because um it is a violation of their human rights no nga kaning ano imo kung kaning discriminate nga mo lang di nakamodol sa ako na ako amigo class nga na covid siya sa kalinan sa Davao Oriental kauban ako sa una sa adu i i i taught in Ateneo de Davao in 2018 and um ano kasi uh, so in ano i had a colleague who who came from ano who, who just came home from um hungary he he took a stud he he spent a year in hungary to study his masters and when he came back around september or december january this year he got infected with covid and then he wrote about his experience being discriminated in the Inquirer. So his name was Ian Salvania. Sige na ako gina mention si Ian sa akong classes actually. Pero katuno nga si Ian gisulat niya sa sa Inquirer. He 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 submitted a column in the Inquirer in the opinion section, and he said that he really dis experienced a lot of discrimination when he came back from to Davao uh, from Hungary, na. Um, he was as asymptomatic. He did not feel any colds or anything. No, he was asymptomatic. He had COVID, but then he spent quarantine in the in the quarantine um, facility. But he felt like this country had a really bad treatment for people with COVID. No, ana si Ian. So, to a degree, you can relate that to human rights class because um, here we can see that human rights refer to the fact that these rights belong to all of humanity and this is the sense intended in the universal declaration of human rights in 1948 so the un 
The UN Declaration of Human Rights acknowledges that everyone as a member of society should exercise all rights indispensable for his dignity and the free development of his personality. So existentially, that's the idea. And I think we should be able to apply this in our own context class, no? even though we are Filipinos and we might think na, ah, pang UN naman na siya, ka nang dili, man serious na makarelate sa tua, kay ka nang diri sa Pilipinas, na ba ba human rights, gakahitabo, ka nang garespetoon ba ang ato ang katungod, diba? Uh, translated, loosely translated, human rights means katungod. Ay mo katungod kay gakarespetuan ba sa akong pamilya, ginarespetar ba sa akong pamilya ang akong katungod uh, sa, sa bilang usa ka babay, ginarespetuan ba ko bilang isa ka LGBT, ginarespetuan ba ko sa akong katilingban, sa akong eskwelahan, ginarespetar ba ako ang katungod? Um dako kaayo og kaning gap actually our country still has a lot of of uh has still has a lot of work to do in order to retain human rights in our country no? or rather for the people of our country whether that be for women for the gay community whether it's for men as well no ang katungod sa lalaki nga dili siya i i i tungod sa iyang mga choices whether or not ang iyang choices ki in line siya sa sa uh, sa norm of being masculine dan dili siya i discriminate pud ang lalaki no so, um, we still have a lot, to, uh, for example, uh, basic human rights violations in the Philippines. Let's look at the book. No? As mentioned in the book, uh, page 99, all improper dealing because of gender or circumstances specific to gender, such as pregnancy or even potential pregnancy and marital status, is a violation of human rights. Gender discrimination happens when an employer considers an applicant or employee less favorable because of his or her sex or gender. So, for example, uh, a violation of human rights could be that we are not um, uh, hired in a job because of our gender. So, whether that's for a boy, a girl, or a gay person, no, that's a form of human rights violation. That that employer, although may on tanga kanang. Ah, okay ra na oi, kaya na basig hire na nila kay dili lang gid sila ganan sa ko. Sabi to class. What if what if di, dapat dili kanila i discriminate tungod sa imong religion, tungod kay Muslim ang isa ka tao or Christian ang isa ka tao, dapat kay dili sila discriminate pero usual kay adres sa Pilipinas. I'm sorry na we have Muslim students here, Aiza. Um in behalf of of course, I am very much respectful towards the towards Muslims. No, I have a lot of Muslim friends, but uh, that's an issue, no? Kining, it's not really about gender at this at this um uh, this example. But if a person is a young Muslim young man or woman, and then they are fresh from college, and then they are applying for a job. And then, especially in Kagen di Oro, grabi ka ka discriminatory, no? Pero we do have an ordinance already, as what we have discussed in the previous lessons. We have an ordinance in CDO called the Anti Discrimination or Non Discrimination Ordinance. So in CDO, rest assured, you are you are you are you can be assured that if you do apply in Kagen di Oro, you you should not be discriminated according to your religion, according to your gender. Because that's part of our law already in CDO, but the the challenge here is if these businesses, these government offices, will actually um, implement this law. So rest assured that if you ever you are a young person who is applying for a job and you are not hired because of your religion or your gender, you should report those businesses to the government, to the city hall. Mo yung mug city hall. Inanino wala ko gihara nila kay kuan kanang tungod sa akong religion wala ko gihire so ma penalty to sila og kuan pila ka na pila 2000 i'm not sure ha or 10000 pesos niya ma warning sa sa government so dapat ing ana no kay basig may mga hala ka ma'am dili ko maya na ma'am we kay kan hadlock ma'am sumbong-sumbong pa ko sa presidente ana that's your right you have to fight for the rights of your fellow fellow people from your religion if you are from a minority group uh, all the more reason for you to fight for your rights because it's a no kaning it's it's your it, you are it's your right as a person 
if sige na lang ta musugot bitaw class nga i violate atong rights sugot na lang ta nga discriminate ta dili ta mo away ta mo supak kanang mura bitaw imuha ang pagkatao kay sige na lang tumbon musugot na lang ka amana bitaw class so although wala kasamok ba di na ko gustog samok sa kinabuhi ma'am kanang lang okay na gid ko <laughs> bitaw class you, um, the thing here is that how do you feel? How are you going to feel about yourself later on? No, kana bitaw. Unsa may mabati ni mo sa makagulingon? Will you get peace of mind? Will you ever have a have peace of mind knowing that you will your people are always discriminated, your uh, fellow women are always discriminated, you yourself are not respected by the people that uh, that matter to you? Kung babay ka niya for in the future, no, if ever the ladies in this class will become wives in the future and then god forbid you will you will marry a man who is going to abuse you in any way whether that be emotional violence economic violence nga dili ka patrabahoon musugot na lang ka ngay nga na imong kinabuhi no dili no kay in a way kay kanang gipaskwela ka kay para kay para makabalo ka mo depensar si mong kagulingon ipaskwila ka sa imong mga ginikanan kay para mamayo imong kinabuhi so aside from your education the fact that the mere fact excuse me that that uh, we it's not just for women but also for boys no for the gentlemen in this class that um, as a young man are you going to allow yourself to be used as well by other people? Kinaabay agay mga yan ang babae no nga gapang gamit na bud. So not everyone goes through those experiences. How about uh, in general in your employment as a man no? Are you going to allow, for example, if you're going to work abroad as an accountant maybe in the future or as um, for students who are in my other sections, whether that be in the nursing uh, nursing profession as a teacher? if you are going to be a diplomat whether in employment in general are you going to allow your employer to pay you this amount of money for the work that you do in the sense that your job is supposed to pay let's say to 30,000 pesos a month but you are severely under underpaid kanami ta underpaid ka gamay ra mo sweldo 13,000 instead na 30,000 ta dapat imong trabaho Kabalutan kabalutan na dapat dikta mo reklamo sa to employer kay kana bitong okay di ko mo reklamo kay pasalamat ko nga naa ko trabaho nga na baya atong mentality pinoy class pero let's just say nga naabayay mga let's just say in sociology class there is the idea of marxism right if you are familiar with the, with the ideology of karl marx he mentioned about the elites and the bourgeoisie the elites and the common people and how the capitalists um, capitalists take advantage of the poverty of the common people in order for them to remain in power so on a Marxist perspective when we allow the capitalists the employers to just um, take advantage of the fact that we uh, we are we are agreeing nagagasugot rata nga bayran tagamay kay tungod kay gapangailangan ta kaning mga naasa naasa kanang taas nga nga position sa society gusto nila nga kanang musugot ra ka nga yana ra diya ra tama nang ibayad sa imo tungod kay di ka musupak kay tungod kay mahadlo ka nga i-fire out ka sa trabaho that's not right at all kay what's your basic human right as a person you are you are your right as a person is to be paid the wage that is due to you so whether or not ang ima educational attainment kay high school level ra ka, wala kay kuan, wala kay education na wala kay wala graduate og high school, tungod kay pobre lugar ka kay abuso na lang ka, tungod kay wala kay kuan. That's not correct no. So whether or not ang imo ang educational attainment kay high school graduate ra ka ni imong trabaho kay lisod ka ayo dapat kay ibayran gid ka sa employer sa imo ang basic human right whether that be that be the minimum wage at least no, that's your right, and then, and then, kung mahadlok ang isa ka tao nga fire out siya sa iyahang trabaho tungod kay musupak siya sa iyahang sweldo, dili sad ka pwede i-fire out si mo employer anak kung, kung musumbong ka sa union, for example, di ba, kani mga, mga universities, for example, class na may union, kana employer, employees union, that's actually part of our constitution that, 
a person has a right to, f to form a union in their employment. Th that's the right of a constitutional right pag ina siya sa isa ka Pilipino. You have the right to to uh, to air out your grievances to your employer if ever you are being you feel like your your um yeah you, you feel like ang imong sweldo kay gakakuan gakaapektuhan kay dapat nas taas ang bayad sa mo. Yung mga ingon din na employer na din mga mga ay, employer din kinana sila yung mga gagmay nga mga kanang paluiluoy bitaw mga ingon employer na do not do not um Na, na saying nga uh, dili daw ni mo sawayon ang the, the spoon that feeds you do not uh, talk bad against the spoon that feeds you <laughs> so natoy one time class ako mismo kay na kanang natrabaho ko sa isa ka school there is a CDO and then giing nan maka ako ako magod kay alumni ko ato nga school unya kuan bitaw ni ingon de sige kog kanang sige vocal ki ko sa akong mga complaints about sa among teach sa akong mga teachers gid sa una kay Nakoy mga nakoy mga maestra sa una nga wala gato nga isa tibok semester wala nito nga ni sige rag exam sa among thesis kay mura may gidulaan nami sa mga teacher kay kani among thesis kay gipapalit ni snack mura bitog um mas nag-focus sa pagkaon sa snack kaysa sa amo ang study ang among mga professor Onya basically wala kana bitong ang ako expectation sa kong education class ba kay wala bitong kay ayo nako nakuha ang akong gusto matun-an kay sige ko an absent ang teacher or ambot lang ha niya kanang niabot din ang panahon nga nagtudlo na sad ko adto nga same that department giingnan din ko sa ako ang department chair nga do not talk bad against the spoon that feeds you and at at that time ning respetar man ko pero now that i think about it beta mura beta if na agani ko dili ganahan ako gyud nang story istorya i'm sorry kay ko an siya kaning it's not right beta class ana ana the basic words sa human rights is right what is right and wrong say sakto dili right so kana lang no nga kani beta just going back to the idea of employment nga um for employment in relation to employment it's rather like okay so if ever you do notice any un unjust uh, practices in your office uh you should speak out whether that be in terms of sa salary or sa kuan kanang in general no so let's watch a video right now class on human rights this is from um from ted ed just for us to have an idea on what is universal human rights. Um, I am not sure if we can finish. I think mahuma na data. Tanan na to. Ang inyo, their quiz will be a quiz assignment na lang everyone. So just answer the quiz that I will post in the classroom. We'll just spend the rest of the time, 20 minutes for lecture. is that each one of us, no matter who we are or where we are born, is entitled to the same basic rights and freedoms. Human rights are not privileges, and they cannot be granted or revoked. They are inalienable and universal. That may sound straightforward enough, but it gets incredibly complicated as soon as anyone tries to put the idea into practice. What exactly are the basic human rights? Who gets to pick them? Who enforces them? How? The history behind the concept of human rights is a long one. Throughout the centuries and across societies, religions, and cultures, we have struggled with defining notions of rightfulness, justice, and rights. But one of the most modern affirmations of universal human rights emerged from the ruins of World War II with the creation of the United Nations. The treaty that established the UN gives as one of its purposes to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights. And with the same spirit, in 1948, the UN General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This document, written by an international committee chaired by Eleanor Roosevelt, lays the basis for modern international human rights law. The declaration is based on the principle that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. It lists 30 articles recognizing, among other things, the principle of non-discrimination and the right to life and liberty. It refers to negative freedoms, like the freedom from torture,
control of slavery as well as positive freedoms, such as the freedom of movement and residence. It encompasses basic civil and political rights, such as freedom of expression, religion, or peaceful assembly, as well as social, economic, and cultural rights, such as the right to education and the right to freely choose one's occupation and be paid and treated fairly. The Declaration takes no sides as to which rights are more important, insisting on their universality, indivisibility, and interdependence. And in the past decades, international human rights law has grown, deepening and expanding our understanding of what human rights are and how to better protect them. So if these principles are so well developed, then why are human rights abused and ignored time and time again all over the world? The problem, in general, is that it is not at all easy to universally enforce these rights or to punish transgressors. The UDHR itself, despite being highly authoritative and respected, is a declaration, not a hard law. So when individual countries violate it, the mechanisms to address those violations are weak. For example, the main bodies within the UN in charge of protecting human rights mostly monitor and investigate violations, but they cannot force states to, say, change a policy or compensate a victim. That's why some critics say it's naive to consider human rights a given in a world where state interests wield so much power. Critics also question the universality of human rights and emphasize that their development has been heavily guided by a small number of mostly Western nations to the detriment of inclusiveness. The result? A general bias in favor of civil political liberties over socio-political rights and of individual over collective or group's rights. Others defend universal human rights laws and point at the positive role they have on setting international standards and helping activists in their campaigns. They also point out that not all international human rights instruments are powerless. For example, the European Convention on Human Rights establishes a court where the 47 member countries and their citizens can bring cases. The court issues binding decisions that each member state must comply with. Human rights law is constantly evolving, as are our views and definitions of what the basic human rights should be. For example, how basic or important is the right to democracy or to development? And as our lives are increasingly digital, should there be a right to access the internet? A right to digital privacy? What do you think? Okay, so that was the um, video class now. Just to um, continue the lesson now, let's just uh, go through the, the remaining parts very quickly. So, um, kindly go to page 99 of the book. Um, we have here, um, I think that would be where we will end with the discussion on human rights now. Um, violation of human rights includes treating an employee or an applicant because he or she does not follow conventional notions of femininity or masculinity. It also includes demands for sexual favors and other physical or verbal harassment like unpleasant remarks about women or men. So forms of violence against women's rights. According to the UN, the UN Fund, Development Fund for Women, Violence against women is a widespread violation of fundamental human rights and an enduring form of gender-based prejudice, as what you have already read in the book. It occurs in every society which affects most women regardless of their age or social and economic status. All forms of violence against women deny women of their fundamental rights and freedoms in terms of their opinion, equality, and justice before the law mobility to have access to information to, and education to work to be employed and many more likewise it hinders their ability to participate actively in society affects their enjoyment of sexual and reproductive health and is a source of tremendous physical and psychological suffering for both women and their families we are already familiar with different forms of violence class now um, maybe i'm just going to write a new slide uh, for this section so that is for a while let me just um, write this slide down. Uh, 
um, you are, we are already familiar, of course, of um, various forms of, of violence against women's rights. And these forms of violence include um, physical abuse, no? as mentioned in the book. That is... So, um, first we have physical abuse, no? Um, this is a perceptive, perceptible, perceptible type of abuse. It may result in physical injury or some cases can be life-threatening. So, um, it can be... So, examples of this are when women are beaten, punched, slapped, like in the case of a punched or slapped. Other examples are cruelty or arm twisting, burning, choking, kicking. Stabbing, strangling, murder, genital mutilation, and others. Second is emotional or physical or psychological abuse. This is the most common type of violence experienced by women and children. This type of abuse also is also a means of creating a power imbalance within a relationship. It often inv involves threats of physical force, being put down, always criticized, and controlled intimidation and forcing unwanted sexual acts so any dili man pasabot nga idepensa bitaw na to class ang mga mga abuse na to kay tungod kay love ta sa tong parents or love ta sa to ang sa tong partners no that's not love no if if, if kuan ka nang naanay you don't feel good about what they're saying to you you have the right to you, and not so the thing here is that Dili ka pwede pugson sa imong parents or sa imong boyfriend or or husband or wife nga buhaton nun sa imong dili gusto buhaton. You ca they cannot force you. So they can also cannot force you to not go out of your house for example if you want to. Kana bitaw na mga kana mga lalaki bitaw nga grabe kay kakuan kanang kanang controlling dili ka nila pugso, pwede pugson buhaton kung unsa dili nimo gusto buhaton so basig maingon ang uban nga gasupak supak man as a parents ma'am di man asya maayo the thing is you have the right no especially if you're of legal age if 18 na ka na akay right buhaton si mong gusto so oh, if moyon sila nga ipalayas mo sa balay ma'am kung, kung magsupak supak ko emotional violence na asya gamay if ila if if mo mo gamit og intimidation if i control ka sa lain always criticizing you nga ingnan ka nga bugok lagi ka emotional violence na na siya so if ever that you might may or may not i uh, god forbid no, if, if any of my students have un encountered any of those forms of abuses you should stand up for your rights no and dapat kay ka nang dili ta magpadala sa mga yana nga mga kanang ipangingon sa atoa from anyone so, basi bitaw ah, di na ko gusto samok sa mong balay, ma'am, kay kanin di pa ko ka kuan sa self po, di pa ko ka ka sustain sa kung self, asa mo ko mo puyo lower ipalayas ko ana ito class. So kanin that's very kuan, that's actually very um practical. Practical man sad nga dili ka mo supak. Pero kung sobra na gani class, kana bitaw murag o practical man nga mo patuo ta sa unsa ingon sa tong parents or anything, pero Naapod kay just remember lang that you have the right to na dili ka buton kung asa ka padulong, dili ka buton kung unsay kuan kan unsa nga kursay mong kuaon. That's your right. Just know that, that lang that you have the, that right na no? that di ka pugson kung unsay mong gusto di ko gusto buhaton. And if ever nga sobra na you can always put your foot down and and um, report those people no to a degree if sobra na gani ni abot nag physical violence pwede na na mo i-report sa ilaha or biyaan ang anggit ni mo sila kung nakay choice nga dili ka gusto mo kay uban na na nila i-delete sila sa imong kinabuhi pwede man na siya no financial economic abuse this is a form of domestic violence in which the abuser uses money to control his partner it is also constructed to isolate a woman into a state of complete financial dependence it includes denial of funds for food and basic needs controlling the family finances access to healthcare and employment that we also have rape and sexual assault, prostitution, human trafficking, female genital mutilation, forced marriage, and sexual harassment. So if ever any of us know anyone who, ha who has undergone any of these abuses class, 
we should always report the transgressor. Um, report the transgressor. I have a student, no quick lani siya na sharing. I have a student who recently reported a case of sexual harassment sa Yaha, and I'm so proud of her kay yaging idala sa sa kanang sa abogado ang ng haras sa Yaha because she knows in herself that she doesn't want these types of people kani mga 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 maniac class ato apang ko ano sa ato ang mga sa ato apang slang kani mga maniakis nga lalaki nga magpadayon pagharas og mga babay she doesn't want these types of men to continue going about and not getting any any punishment for what they they are doing to women so i'm so proud of her nga iyang isumbong kay ko ana siya kanang that's her right as a woman no nga dili siya i i i harass so um, that's just in in relation to um, human rights. Let's now just briefly go to women and empowerment, and then um, LGBT rights and struggles. So those are some of the global issues on on on, on women, global gender issues. So one global gender issue is violation of human rights, especially for women. The uh, another another lesson related to global gender issues is women and empowerment, no. So that's it. Okay. So in relation to women and empowerment, uh, we see here in page one hundred one. So women, the importance of women empowerment is a universal issue. So in relation to the rights that we saw, how can we say that a person is empowered? As what I have mentioned in the, in the talk last month on women and empower, women empowerment and religion, uh, empowerment means that a person feels that they can address any issue that happens to their life. They can take control of any negative uh, issue that may arise in their personal um, personal lives no so with that class um, we can get inspiration from women in the Philippines no who have who have actually stood up against um, abuse we have here Trinidad Texon she fought, she was known as the mother of Biak Nabato who began her revolutionary activities during the preparations for the revolution of 1896 Hilaria Aguinaldo, the wife of General Emilio Aguinaldo, who founded the Asociación de, de Damas de Cruz Roja, an organization which coordinated the humanitarian work of women. Constancia Poblete founded the Liga Femenina de la Paz in 1902. This group was organized to help the Americans in their participation in the pacification drive against the Filipino people. Concepcion Felix de Calderon, she founded the Asociación Feminista Filipina in 1905. The first women's club in the Philippines was established to promote the social welfare of women and their participation into public matters. We also have other feminist organizations and leaders, Asociación Feminista Ilonga, which was founded in 1906, um, going around the country to awaken the consciousness of women as equal partners of men in nation building. La Protección de la Infancia, Founded in 1907, provided babies with pasteurized milk among the educated mothers on maternal and infant care. Gabriela Silang in 1763, the first woman general and heroine of Ilocos. She was known as the first Filipina woman to lead a revolt during the Spanish colonization of the Philippines. So, in general class, Filipino Filipinas are actual have actually been very um very strong no ang mga babae sa Pilipinas mga kusgan gid in a way before pa nangabot ang mga Spaniards kay egalitarian man ang atong society equal man tanan as what was mentioned in the lesson in queer theory last um few weeks ago so maybe we as women can can base our strength from our ancestors no nga mga babae sa una that that we as an identity as an identity filipino women are strong and we can fight battles even in in war dili na siya boot boot class nga kanang halaka grabe na feminist na kid kayo 
it's true. Like, uh, dapat na atay level of asa na to i-base atong dignity kin sa atong role models na how, where do we get our strength from, from these characters? It's not even a character, these are heroes, no? From these heroes. And it's a something, it's an idea that doesn't really come across the minds of people nowadays in the dig digital age. We don't usually think about heroes anymore because sometimes we're too much focused on the negative things that happen in society and we forget to see the good that other people have done na, in the world. So it's actually better to focus on heroes rather than the, the, the bad things that happen in the world. And one hero is, as mentioned, Gabriela Silang. Teresa Magbanwa, Marcela Marcelo, Ague Agueda Cahabagan, Delfina Natividad, Gregoria de Jesus. Then we also have laws that empower the Filipino woman. First is the Philippine Constitution, which states that the state shall protect all working women by providing safe and healthful working conditions. RA 6725 of 1989, an act to strengthen the prohibition on discrimination against women. RA 6949, an act to declare March 8 as a special working holiday known as National Women's Day. Let's look at the important ones here. RA 6955, an act to declare the unlawful way of pairing Filipino women to foreign nationals for marriage on a mail order basis and other similar practices, including the advertisement and publication. So, bawal ng mail, mail order brides class ato ang country. Take note of that. Any form of human trafficking is illegal in our nation. Our, um, we have here daycare center, uh, barangay day, based daycare center for free to free women for other activities like taking a job or going back to school. So, natay daycare centers nga mga bata. Okay, pwede rin bilhin sa daycare no, para makatabaho pa ang mama. Uphold women's integration as equal partners of men in development and nation building, maternity benefits. Um, the government should support the needs of females, give representations to women in social security in the Se Social Security Commission. Declare sexual harassment as unlawful in the employment, education, or training in environment. Um, an act to provide aid to women, especially those who own small businesses, in order to fully harness the talents and skills of the female labor force. Um, reclassify the definition of the crime of rape into a crime against persons. Exclusive original jurisdiction over child and family cases. Provide protection and assistance for rape victims. Provide benefits and privileges to solo parents and their ch children. Institute policies to eliminate human trafficking, especially to women and children. Uh, de declare criminalization of violence against women and their children. Um, provide for a national directive on responsible parenthood and reproductive health. That is R8 10354 of 2012 or the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act. The Magna Carta for Women remove discrimination against women by fulfilling their rights, especially those in the marginalized sectors. So let's go to LGBT rights and struggles very quickly. So those are some of the global gender issues class. No? Um, first is human rights, second is uh, rights for women, and then the third global issue is LGBT rights and struggles. So for this lesson, now for LGBT rights and struggles, um, the Philippines as a democratic society claims to give equal access and opportunity to each citizen. However, despite this scenario, many minority groups, particularly Filipino LGBT, are still treated as second class and not politically recognized. As I think we have already m mentioned this lesson in the past class, no? Sa atong, in our lesson on queer theory. We are already familiar of the rights and abuses of the LGBT. Uh, firstly, these are homophobia. First, no? Homophobia refers to the fear or aggression towards gay people marginalization and social exclusion of the LGBT. It is at the core of exclusion from fulfilling the full social lives at, at individual, interpersonal, and societal levels. People under this status relatively have less control over their lives and the resources available to them. 
these um, some LGBT could commit the following no attempt suicide are being ignored and isolated drop out of school lack of family and social support leave the home and family transfer to other countries and un are unable to find regular jobs are unable to access various social services psychological distress the LGBT people face considerable levels of discrimination harassment and stigmatization in their day-to-day -day life including casual homophobic comments childhood sexual abuse harassment by neighbors no protection against discrimination at work physical violence and discrimination prejudice embarrassed response from professionals rejection by loved ones or religious groups verbal harassment victims of hate crimes and violence as well the lgbt are victims of hate crimes the lgbt people are sometimes targets of sexual and physical assault harassment and hate crimes so we have various LGBT movements in the Philippines to address these, namely ACOD, which is a gay support group in Davao Oriental, Alpha Nu. In the Phil in Cagayan de Oro, we have Mindanao Pride, Class No, and then Miss Or Pride as well, I've heard. So you can refer to the organizations in page 106. The LGBT movement has been very supportive and energetic in making a change in the community. In the advent of modern society, more LGBT organizations were formed to serve specific needs. And in the elections next year, next year, I do suggest for you to vote for a party list na that will that are that is an LGBT party list now, so that we can put a seat in government for the LGBT. So if ever you don't really know who to vote for for a party list, you can only vote for one party list. Vote for Lad Lad party list. That is the LGBT party list now. Why? Because we want to delete man vote pas vote nga immoral ang mga gay people diba class na, na discuss naman nato na siya nga basin ganito a degree ga these LGBTs are even sacred to a, to a level no among other cultures and um, we have to give them a space in congress to push for laws that will help them kay kanang ang inyong party list ang uban tawo ginabintot bintot lang aba men na lang ginabutar may pag inyo na hatag sa LGBT kay para pod matabangan sila no yeah vote for the elections next year register to vote i am going to assign that to everyone in this class nga dapat naka registro mo na magbotar mo ya yeah, mga dili magbotar i might even make that as an assignment for the finals no mag register mo but in any case it's already time class um sorry na extend ta um just remind you just reminding you about your final project now the god project that will be your final exam for this lesson no more exams uh, finals canal lang project and i will just post the uh, quiz assignment for this lesson are there any questions okay seeing no okay seeing none that will be all for today class i'll see you on um next week so uh, tuesday so we will not meet anymore on Friday. I will just post the quiz assignment. Just answer that by Saturday. Na lang na ko yes, yeah, no, yeah, 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 ye